Whoa, I wonder what's inside that book. But you wanna know the even crazier thing? You can do all of that in the free version of Resolve. Check it out. Hey folks, Nathan here. So today we're talking about magic. Ooh, the sparkly, shiny, fun things. And how you can do it yourself in DaVinci Resolve. And more importantly, how you can set up your shot on location to give yourself the best chance for success when working on it in post. So without any further ado, let's get into it. So here we are in DaVinci Resolve 16 and everything I show today can be done in the free version of Resolve, but hold up. Wait, how do we even get this shot? So I set up the camera pointing down a hallway and used the natural light coming from a nearby window. It was a little too hard for my liking, so with some diffusion, boom, soft lighting. I then wanted to add some light from the open door to add a little bit of contrast to the shot, but I wasn't getting enough pop from the house lights, so I brought in an old tungsten light, flashed that puppy on, and boom, now we're in business. Now here's where the real magic starts on set. Now I know that I wanted to open a book and then have a green magical spell come out of that book. Now to make that easier to tie into reality, here's what I did. I took a hollow book and an LED light with a green gel on it. I then taped that puppy to the book, turned it on so when you open the book, you're gonna have green light spill out all over your actor's face so it's actually like you have a glowing object. So I went ahead and shot the scene and I made sure to keep her movement to a minimum when she opened the book just so it makes our job a little bit easier in the future. And now we're good to bring it into Resolve. So here we are again in DaVinci Resolve 16 for real this time. And I've just done some basic corrections to the shot to get it out of log and into a rec 709 color space. So once you have your shot corrected and trimmed to your liking, we're going to select it, right click and create a compound clip. And we're just gonna create. And the reason why I'm doing this is because when I bring our clip into Fusion, I actually wanna work with the corrected clip, not the log footage. Then when we're done in Fusion, we're gonna do some color grading with the VFX in the shot. So now to keep things simple, I'm just gonna to go to where we wanna actually do some VFX. So right where she opens the book here, we can just cut that sucker with Control backslash, and then go ahead a bit right to when she closes the book. And whoa, whoa, there we go. Okay, perfect. Yeah, right as that book closes, again, control backslash. Okay, great. We're then going to select our clip and go into Fusion. So here we are in Fusion, and I'm gonna go into my media pool and drag down my wizard effect, which you can download for free from Footage Crate, link in the description. So as you can see, we now have media in two. I'm gonna drag this down to here to create a merge node. But as we scroll through a clip, we don't see that funky effect. Well, here's what we gotta do. We gotta go into our media in node, and we want the effect to loop. So we're just gonna hit loop and bing, bang, boom, there it is. And just to keep things organized, let's rename our nodes with F2. Just name it whatever you want there. So now we have our wizard effect on screen, which is great, but it's just staying in one spot. We wanna make it move around. So how do we do that? Well, if we look in our inspector here, we don't actually see any controls for movement. We actually have to go and grab a transform node. I'm gonna click on that and it adds it in right there. And now we can move it around wherever we please. So let's figure out how we're gonna do this animation. We're gonna drag this puppy down and we know we want it to start from the bottom of the book. As we go through, maybe we can follow her eyes and have it move upward until it's right in front of her face. Then as the book closes, we can bring it down and maybe shrink it a bit so that it closes inside of the book like it's getting sucked back in. Okay, that's the game plan. Here's how we do it. We're gonna go back to the beginning of our shot and we can maybe actually have the effect lift as she's kind of lifting the book a little bit. So we'll start it right around here. Great, it's gonna be way in the bottom and we can shrink it down in size. Okay, we're then gonna start it right down here. And to lock in that position for animation, we're just going to enable our position keyframes and our size keyframes. We're then gonna go forward until her eyes are up way into the air, right about there. Then we're gonna bring it all the way up in front of her face and we're gonna increase the size a bit. Whoa, not that much. Yeah, maybe like to there. Okay, great. So now we're gonna go forward frame by frame just as the book closes. And what we're gonna do is we're going to bring it down and we can maybe actually decrease our size a little bit too so it kind of gets smaller like it's getting sucked in. 
Now let's watch it through and see what we're looking at. I'm gonna come to the beginning. I'm just gonna click off of our transform effect just so I can get rid of this little box. Now let's watch it through. Okay, it's moving up and then it gets sucked in. Okay, that looks pretty good, but you may be thinking to yourself, well, it's on top of the book. We'll deal with that in a second. So one thing I'm not keen on is as it's moving through the air here, it looks so clear, there's no blur. Well, if we go into our transform effect, we then go into our settings, we can tick motion blur. And now as it's moving fast, we get kind of blurred out. So as we tick it off and back on, you get that nice natural looking motion blur just to make it look a little more realistic. So that's great and all, but I'm finding the motions are still fairly rigid. So what I wanna do is I wanna go into spline and I wanna select my transform one. And as you can see here, it has our size changes and our displacement changes. So where we're moving it to, and as we scroll through, you can see those in action. And just super easy, I'm gonna smooth everything out by hitting Shift S on my keyboard and boom, it's all now smoothed out. And we can zoom in a little bit. And I actually wanna make a little change with my size here. I'm gonna click on that and I'm just gonna drag this over so I want it to get bigger before it gets smaller. And then I can also adjust the motion of how it goes into the book. I wanna change that a little bit. Great, let's see how this looks. Now, let's make it look like it's actually coming out from inside of the book. So what we wanna do is we wanna click on our merge node. Now we wanna create a mask and actually mask out our book so it sits over top of the effect. And the way I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna click on our merge node and hit shift spacebar on my keyboard. I'm then going to type in poly for polygon and add that and it allows us to draw a mask. But you may be looking at it and thinking, hey, what happened to my cool animation and wizard effect? Well, it's currently being masked out and any area where we would draw would then reveal it. Well, that's not what we want. We actually want the inverse of that. And would you look at that? We have the invert button. Now, anything we draw over top of it is going to hide it. So we're just gonna hit Control Z a few times and we're gonna get to drawing a mask around our book here. So let's get cracking. I'm just gonna clear up a little bit of space. Maybe drag this out a little and kind of zoom in with Control and scroll wheel on my keyboard. So let's start with our mask. Just super simple, not trying to do anything fancy. Basically just cover the book and you can get a little bit goofy when it's coming to the edges of the book because that's never gonna actually interact with your effect. Okay, great. We're gonna zoom out a little bit here. And now we have our mask done, but as we go through the shot, you can see that our mask doesn't actually move. Now here comes the fun part where we actually have to animate it. So enjoy this time-lapse of me animating the mask to cover the book. And now that that's done quick and easy, what I'm gonna do just to tidy things up a little bit here is I'm actually gonna go in and add a tiny bit of a soft edge to this mask, just so it doesn't look as weird as like the book closes or something or when it's coming out of it. And that looks just a little bit nicer in areas like this. And now we can come out of Fusion and back into the edit page. And our clip is rendered, so we can just play it back and see what we have so far. So she opens the book and the spell comes out, it gets big and boom, goes back in. Awesome. So here's something we can do to make that just a little bit cooler in the color page. What we're gonna do is we're gonna add an adjustment clip on top of here, drag that out a little bit and then go into the color page. We're then gonna go down to our resolve effects and go down to the light effects. We're gonna grab our glow effect and drag it on. So what we wanna to do to get things nice and glowy is we wanna go into our shine threshold and we're gonna bring that puppy down. And basically it allows darker things to get kind of glowy. So as we go down, you see to the bottom here, you can see everything is glowing, but that's a little bit too much. I just wanna play with it until basically it's just the spell and a little bit of her face that's glowing. And we can check the before and after by pressing Control D. And as you can see, her face does get a little bit brighter and that spell just brightens up a little bit the before and the after. So we do get a nice glow for sure. And we're just gonna add a new node with Alt S and again into our Resolve FX Lite, we're gonna go down to Lens Reflections. And right off the bat, you can see we're getting these really cool kind of lens reflections going on here. Personally, I think they're a little too strong right now, so I'm gonna blend that in just a little bit more. 
And we could probably bring the glow down a little bit too. So just bring up our shine threshold a bit. Yeah, that to me is looking good. Now you can do these effects with infusion. I personally just find it a little bit easier for me to do it in the color tab. But again, it's whatever works for you. And we can check out our before with Alt D and after. So that's looking pretty cool. And now we can head back into the edit page. Now, as we play through, we have something that looks like this. So she opens up the book, a little bit more glow on her face, and then the cool effect pops up. And then for extra marks, you just add a little bit of camera motion and some sound design, as you can see here, and you get this. So anyway, folks, I hope that helps you learn a little bit more about creating magic effects inside of DaVinci Resolve and how using practical light on set can really help you sell that effect. So anyway, if you like this video, be sure to hit that button and get subscribed for lots more videos like this. I put out two Resolve tutorials a week, every Monday and Thursday. And let me know what you think of these VFX kind of videos and if there's anything you want me to cover in the future. Anyway, have yourself a good one. Okay, bye.